All right. A lot going on this morning. Exciting day. One of the most exciting things that has happened to me just this morning, as I fumble through everything up here, Caden came up to me this morning and goes, Daddy, 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 I got something for you. And he was so excited. There was nothing, it was just so cool to see the excitement on his face to give Daddy his, his Father's Day card. And so... I got, to, I got this this morning from Caden, and I was just so proud. I said, I'm going to take that to church with me. I'm going to put it up on my desk, and I'm just so, so excited. And, uh, and it says, a really great Father's Day you must have, because a really great father you are. And so that's exciting to me. I, I just, what a blessing to, as much as kids drive us nuts, drive us up the wall, exhaust us, take away our sleep. All those things are so worth little tiny moments like that. And then he comes in after Sunday school and goes, here, Dad, here, I made this for you. And I never thought I would be excited about stuff like that. But you doggone bet, I am so excited that when he comes running in, I'm, I'm going to put, I mean, my, my door is so cluttered with stuff that he, you know, that he makes. Um, and before I know, I'm going to have two of them doing that, going, Daddy, make that. So we celebrate Father's Day today. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. Now, I don't know how it's been here at North Athens, um, but I just remember... Um, when, uh, make sure I got my notes in order here. Um, over the years, going to church, it always seems like on Mother's Day, we just, we are celebrating moms and how great they are and what awesome people they are. But then we get to Father's Day and we're like, oh, Dad, you got to straighten up here. We got to, we got to, we got to get you, you know, kind of like a motivational, you know, let's, let's get it together here, right? You know, I don't know if that you guys done that here, but, um, I always kind of was wondering, why, why, why does it always work that way? And I think there's a reason to that. And don't worry, guys, I'm not going to just chastise men and, and dads here because um, now I'm in that boat too, so now I'm really going <laughs> to uh, encourage. But um, we're called to be the spiritual leaders of our homes. The Bible teaches us that. It talks about that. He talks about that in Ephesians, where it says, Husbands, love your wives. You know how we like to read that verse that says, Wives, submit to your husbands and do what he says because he's the head of the, you know, he's the head of the house, he's the head of the home. Adam was born first, Eve was second, this and that. But then we stop there. <laughs> the verse keeps going, and it says, It gives us men, us husbands and fathers, such a charge to love our wives as Christ loves the church, to present them pure and blameless. Guys, we got a lot to carry with that. But with that, we also have a lot of encouragement. Why? Because we don't have to carry that all by ourselves. Because Jesus said, "My yoke, you take, take up my burden, take up my yoke. Because my yoke is light. It's easy. You can carry it because I'm going to carry it with you. In fact, I'm going to carry it for you. But we have to be leaning on him to do that. So, happy Father's Day. What an exciting day this is. Today, we're going to talk about a father's legacy. Do we have slides? Somewhere. <laughs> God gives us a legacy, right? God left us a legacy, right? He left a legacy. And that legacy 
was Jesus. It is Jesus. Jesus left us a legacy as well. Okay? God sent Jesus for us. God the Father sent Christ the Son, his legacy, to share with the world God's message. And that message continues today. And Jesus' legacy that he left to his disciples that we've been talking about for weeks now is to go and make disciples. And those disciples carried that legacy with them. It's kind of like when you're running in a race, in a relay, and you're running in that relay. How many relay runners we got out there? Anybody? One? What's that? She runs relays. Avery does it. So we got two relay runners in church. You ran, didn't you? It doesn't matter. It's okay. I would have probably bumbled it all over the place. You know, I, but like a race, someone running in a race, you have this baton that they give you. And it's something that you pass on. And that's what God did. He passed it to Jesus. Jesus passed it to the disciples. The disciples made more disciples. And those disciples made more disciples. And he says, do this to the end of the earth, right? I want you to pass on this legacy. Now, dads, correct me if I'm wrong, but you always kind of want to leave something with your children, right? Yes? No? You, you may respond. What are some things that you want to leave with your kids or that you have tried to teach them before you sent them off into the big world or some of them are still at home, what is it that you're trying to teach your kids to take, to what? That you love them. Respect. How, how does that go? Discipline. Discipline. Did you say? Respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That's right. Yes. God, you want to teach them God. All right, what else? Say that again. That's right. To teach them that their sins were bought by Jesus Christ's blood, that they may know that salvation. And discipline is part of that. And respect is part of that. We want to teach them life lessons, right? And life is full of lessons, isn't it? I mean, I'm 39, I'm still learning lessons. You know, I've only been a pastor for, a, a, a pastor, a senior pastor for a little over a year. There's a lot of lessons that I have to learn yet. And, uh, and, and we're constantly growing, but we also want to pass on what God's given us, right? What about skilled traits? Who learned how, whose dad taught them to mow the lawn? Anybody? One? Did all the rest of you just jump out there with the mower? And there we go. All right. Yeah, your dad's teach. Dad, usually, now, there's always the, the, I've seen actually in this area, I've seen a lot of ladies out there mowing. I'm serious. And not just Kristen. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, like, people at Waukesha, I saw the, the ladies are out there on that mower. And this one lady, she lives over on K Drive, and she's got one of those zero radius turning power mowers that goes like 360 degrees. And she's out there, and she's just having a good old time out there. I, it just amazes me. But those are some things that we want to teach. Uh, skilled traits. You want to teach your kids that. You know, maybe uh, how to hammer a nail. You know, how not to hammer a nail. And, what not, and, and teach them what? to say when you miss the nail, not what not to say when you miss the nail. Oh. Um, <clears throat> what about hobbies? Do you share your hobbies with your kids? Because when you share what you are passionate about with your kids, you're making a connection there. Now, there's always the very likelihood that your kids might not share the same interest as you, 
which is okay. But then what is our call as, as dads if they're not interested in what we're interested in? What's our job? Get into what they're interested in and start doing that with them because that's what's connecting with them. Right now we're in the process of figuring out what sport Caden's going to really like. And um, that's going to really push me with this whole weight loss battle that I have because I have this scary inclination that he is going to love soccer more than baseball. So, so we got to get that Saturday morning thing going again and uh, get my, my uh, pudgy rear end out there and, and, and start sweating because uh, Caden doesn't stop. And you guys know that because I have to like put the brakes on every Sunday morning just to slow him down. And because uh, we get to T-ball, and he's like, Dad, T-ball's bowing. And he's just standing out there waiting for something to happen, and then you get this little kid, that goes, and then it goes about three feet. He hates playing defense in baseball. But, boy, when he gets up to bat, that kid's ready to wail on it. And it's, it's so exciting to see how our kids grow and change. <coughs> we want, fathers want to pass on Life skills. Um, how about a strong relationship with Jesus? Do we want to pass that on to him? I better hear a lot of amens for that. Like, can I get an amen? Amen. Because, guess what? Here's that word again. That's where discipleship begins. It begins at home. It starts at home. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dad. Um, my dad loved to hunt. He loved fishing. He loved nature. He loved trains. He was into all this stuff, and he had so many hobbies. Uh, my dad was an avid reader. Uh, he really enjoyed reading history books. Um, I did take uh, the funny hats that my dad liked to wear, and uh, that was passed on to me. I like to wear my dad's funny hats. And um, we have these things that we share with our kids. But as a kid, you almost kind of idolize your dad in the beginning, don't you? A little bit, because that's your, that's your image of what a man is. Now, as you get older, or maybe as life goes on, everybody's got a different story about what what that looks like. <clears throat> because me and my dad didn't always get along. And we had, we had a lot of rough times. Um, but the one thing that I was blessed with, though, is that I always knew my dad loved me. No matter how much we argued, no matter how much um, we had differences and opinions and conflict, there was always that love there. And that's what I want to encourage you dads with, is make sure your kids know that you love them. Don't think you're manly by not saying, I love you, okay? A real man knows how to say, I love you, and I'm proud of you. Because kids need to hear that. And my dad gave me that. He always told me that he loved me. I didn't always like to hear it all the time because I'm like, oh, I'm a man who can't say that word, love, leave me. No. He was real. That was real. And, and he was, a, you know, and he was what I always envisioned. I said, this, is, this dude's a manly man. He likes to shoot his deer. He goes hunting. He does these things. He did, but there's, there was more to life than that for my dad. He also read poetry. He also wrote poetry. He loved to read books and spend time and study. And he passed those things on to me. It's kind of interesting because my brother took on, you see all the hunting pictures? My brother's in those pictures. You don't see me as much. I didn't, I didn't grasp onto that side of it. But what I did grasp onto was his love for books and his love for God's word and his love for those kinds of things. Um, his love for nature, love being outdoors. And to me, that's just the epitome of who my dad was, is that picture right there. That's taken up at the Rockford Dam, and he would spend hours upon hours just doing his thing. And 
But what we have to be careful of is don't let the passions overtake the relationship. And that's where we struggle, is we're, we're into what we're into, but we also want to share what our kids are into. And one of the things that my dad and I and my brother all had in common is we rode bikes. Um, my dad had this, this knack. I used to go, Dad, you, didn't t you took a pic, like, I always used to say, Dad, you take pictures of nothing. And he goes, son, don't you see what's in it? My dad took that picture. And because uh, I always thought, you didn't take, like, usually I'm like, you got to take pictures of people. You got to have someone in there. He's like, don't you see the beauty that God's created in that picture? And he says, and this picture doesn't even do that scene justice. And my dad had this passion for God, how God created things, how, how he just creates these beautiful scenes with clouds, with the sun, with the colors. I mean, there were so many facets to my dad that I didn't even realize because I was too busy either arguing with him or trying to do my own thing or trying to get his attention. And, and so that's something that I'm trying to do for my boys is learning to pay attention to what drives them, what gets them excited, what they're into. Of course, I'm trying to highly influence my boys to like what I like, but at the same time, we've got to be able to be flexible enough to realize that they're not always going to like what we like, and we need to be open to, to sharing in what they're passionate about. So, do you guys have any favorite moments that you've had with your kids? Any stories or just moments that you shared with your kids? Any? Dads? This is for dads today. Sean, you're smiling and you got something? So many. <laughs> yeah. Can I share that with, so everybody can hear? He was saying um, one of the most meaningful things to him was that his sons would thank him for certain things that he did as a dad. And that just meant so much to him. You know, and, and one of the things he said is this, one of his boys said, thanks for never cheating on mom. I mean, that's huge. Especially in our world today. You know, is, and that's why I, I was praying for marriages too because we are the leaders of our wives and we have to lead them well. We are the spiritual leaders. We are called to be that. And, and we have to do that with love and grace. We have to do that with patience. We have to do that with humility. I mean, that really is such a heavy call to carry that baton of the spiritual leader of our home. That's tough. It's not easy. And we don't always do it well. And God calls us to that, though. So then, do we have any others? Anybody else want to share? Um, my dad loves to catch fish uh -huh. in the summer. Also, dad loves to hunt for deer. Does he ever take you fishing? Yeah. With, Good. With That's awesome. You like it? Awesome. Yeah. Um, I did my daddy gone. Mm hmm Uh -huh. Mom. Yeah. Uh, Mom, I think I'm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's tough. It's tough sometimes.
Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got a different tradition. Yeah. My, 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 one of mine was uh, giving Caden his first baseball bat. I was very excited about it because I played baseball as a kid. Loved it. And uh, I, I, I probably went overboard as usual, but uh, that's me. And I said, son, here's your first Louisville slugger. Use it well. Don't hit any kid in the head. <laughs> Quit swinging that. Stop doing that. Only at the plate. But have fun. <laughs> yeah. Dads make a lasting impact in our lives that we don't even realize. Um, of course, I have all these prerequisites that I want to leave for, for, for Caden. You know, I, I, my, my prerequisites was, uh, you know, you gotta, you got, I, want, I want him to love Star Wars. I want him to love Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia. Got to love those things, right? Uh, I hope he has a love for reading because I love to read. Um, I want him to, uh, but you know what, more than anything, more than anything, I don't care if he likes any of that stuff. More than anything, I want our kids to love Jesus so much that they become men who love and share the word of God with me. I don't care if they become pastors. If they do, oh, I'll be excited. It's all get out. But to share God's word with people. So that brings us to the real question. What legacy does God want us to leave? Open your Bibles, if you will, to Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 4. Because this is what it's really about. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words that I command you today be on shall be your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk with of them when you sit at your, in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So, what is God's desire for us? What, does, what baton does he want us to pass to the generation after us? Love God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And Jesus added, with all your mind as well. These words, he says, shall be on your heart. How do we do that? How do God's words get on our heart? You've got to read it. You've got to study it. You've got to memorize it. God's word. Ugh, I know. Tell me about it. I'm doing 2-7, and it's a challenge. That's what we were doing today in our 2-7 study, is we were working on the hardest verses that we were struggling with today, right? And how did that go? It took a while, but you got it. And we were digging into the Word of God, trying to get it as Scripture is teaching us that it will be on our hearts. So if you want these, heart, these words to be on our hearts, and we want to pass these on to our children, then we need to do this ourselves by reading, studying, and memorizing the Word of God. And obeying. That's later in the notes, but you got it. Absolutely. 
then you teach them diligently to your children, right? I mean, that's what it's telling me here in Deuteronomy. And that means you can't teach what you don't know, right? So refer back to love God and have his word on your heart. So we love God. What does that mean? What does that look like? Loving God means we're spending time with him like you spend with your newborn baby. Spending time with him like you would spend with your, your son or daughter. Spending time with God is one way that was just one way that we love God. There's so many ways that we love God. I mean, we've got our trustees and our volunteers who love God by making our church look beautiful and nice on the outside. We've got people who work really hard to, to clean our church every week. We've got people who love God by, by putting together VBS and putting up all these props and all these cool things that we're going to be hitting our head on each week or for, for at least a week, us tall guys. Okay? Love God and have his word on your heart. Then it goes further and it says, talk about God's word when you sit in your house. Dads, that's our job. Not just a job. Hopefully it's our passion. Hopefully it's our, someone always tells me, your pressing passion to share the word of God, to make disciples. That's what we're called to do. And like, and like Bonnie said, we've got to live this out. We've got to practice this. Not easy. If our passions for our hobbies outweigh our passions for serving and sharing Jesus with our kids and the other people in our community, we might want to do some reevaluating as to where our focus is. And I say that, I always, if I feel like I'm pointing a finger, remember, there's three pointing back at me, okay? Remember that. <laughs> this is on me, too. I, it, it's a, it is a challenge to not want to just, I just want time to myself. I just want time to myself. Man, that was over for me two years ago. And I wouldn't trade a moment. Okay, then it keeps going. He says, talk about them when you're walking along the way. How did we develop, how do we develop a pressing passion for God if we are not ourselves spending time with him? If we, if you struggle with this thought, read the article in the newsletter about the ten reasons you should memorize large chunks of scripture. It really made an impact on me. It really challenged me. And I know it's hard. You know what the first reason they say is important for us to memorize Scripture? Has anybody read it yet? It's in the newsletter. First reason, because it's hard, because we have bad memories. I have a bad memory. I can't memorize Scripture. Yeah, that was my excuse too. That's gone. Because the more you memorize scripture, the better your memory gets. But you have to force yourself to do it. And you have to be diligent in doing it. That's hard. Making time to do that. Talk about it when you lie down. Talk about it when you rise. Bind it as a sign on your hand. Write them on the doorposts of your house. Man. What legacy does God want us to pass on to our kids? It's right there in Deuteronomy. 6, 4 through 9. I catch up on my slides. But if that's not enough, let's look at Ezra 7, verse 10. I'll give you a second. For Ezra is in the Old Testament, towards the front, right after Second Chronicles. 
just before Nehemiah. Here we go. Verse, seven, or verse 10, chapter 7. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it. And teach his statutes and rules in Israel. I want that kind of passion as a dad. I want that kind of passion for God's word all the time. I don't have that passion all the time. Sometimes it's a lot of work to spend time studying God's word. Now you're going, wait a minute, don't you do that all the time? That's your job, right? Yeah, but I mean your personal time. Okay? It's easy for a pastor to read the Bible every day. I, any, anytime that question comes up, do you read your Bible? Sure. Of course I do. And I do. But how much personal time are we spending in God's word? That's what we're called to pass on to our kids. That's what we're called to pass on to our families. So Ezra tells us that a heart, he had a heart to study the law of Yahweh, the Lord. Then do it. So do what it says. Does that sound like a familiar verse? James chapter 1, don't just be listeners of the word, but doers of the word. So let's do what it says by building up his kingdom, by building up the family, by making disciples, um, by doing these things. Sounds an awful lot like the Great Commission to me in the book of Ezra. Let's flip over to Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That's Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. So right there in the psalm, he's telling us, don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. Don't sit in the seat of scoffers. But delight yourself in the law of the Lord. And meditate it on it both day and night. So our call is dads. Ephesians 6, 4. Here's where Paul gets a little rough on us. He says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We need to not provoke our kids to anger. At the same time, we need to bring them up in the discipline and the law of the Lord. And we can't do that if we don't know what it says. We can't do that if we're not practicing what it says. And we can't practice what it says if we don't read it. And if we don't read, do you see the pattern there? You start by reading it, you study it, you get into it, you memorize, and then you teach it. Wait a minute, no wait. Then you live it, then you teach it, and then you pass it on to them. This is tough, isn't it? But we want to know Jesus. I don't want to just, I don't want us to just merely gain knowledge, but to have every, the very words of God written on our hearts so we can teach our children the same, so we can know Jesus. Remember that verse in Matthew 7? Where, where we say, didn't we do all these things for you? Didn't we serve you in the name of Jesus? Didn't we cast out demons? And Jesus said what? 
Away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. Wow. I don't want those words. I don't ever want to hear those words from Jesus. That's one of the things that scares me the most. That's why talked, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. I want to know Jesus. And the, and the way we know Jesus is by spending time with Jesus, spending time in his word, thinking about it, praying about it, sharing it with others, discussing it, and then doing what it says. What God are you serving? Because our kids also pick up our bad habits, right? What false God do you need to get rid of in your life? What trait do you pray your children do not pick up? The list is long. The list is long. What is coming between you and your relationship with the Father? Is it laziness? Is it obsessions? Is it hobbies? Whom do you serve? What do you need to trim that may better teach your children? Let's look at Joshua real quick. I know. Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, well then, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers that your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, or who's, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I've seen that written on doorposts at people's homes. We will serve the Lord. We might not do it perfect. We might not have it all together. We not, might be where we, want, we think we should be. But that should never deter us from keep, to keep trying. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. There's always hope in Christ. There is always hope, no matter how far you've fallen. Whom do you serve? May we not forget our call. May we choose to serve the Lord. May we lead our families in his word, May we know Jesus. Because discipleship truly does begin at home. I've been carrying this baton around all morning. And it says here, this, this was given to me by my pastor down the road. He was my pastor for two and a half years, and he's still mentoring me and praying with me each week. And he, I was in his discipleship huddle. And he passed this baton that says, Jesus said to his disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Teach these disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always to the very end of the age. May we pass on this baton of discipleship. May you... Have a wonderful and happy Father's Day. Spend it with your families today. Dads, I salute you. I am excited to be a dad for the first time. Even though I've been a dad for two years, I'm very excited. And I want to encourage us to pass on that legacy of Christ's love. All God's people said, amen. amen.